Chapter 3 deals with applications of derivatives, and today we're going to look at 3.1, velocity and acceleration. So if we look at the displacement function, it's generally called S of t. It's the displacement, which is the distance and direction an object has moved from an origin over a period of time. In other words, I went 700 meters. So you go a distance in meters. The velocity is a rate of change of the displacement. So that's your first derivative. So the rate of change of the displacement of an object with respect to time, example, meters per second. So we talked about that when I explained if you were going to Toronto and you went 400 kilometers, that would be your displacement. And if you did it in four hours, then you would say you were going 100 kilometers per hour, and that would be your velocity. Your acceleration, which is the derivative of the velocity function, gives you the rate of change of the velocity with respect to time, and that would be in meters per second squared. So we're going to take a look at how you take a second derivative, which is basically just taking the derivative of a derivative. So if we had the function y, it would go to y prime for our first derivative, and our second derivative, you'd say y double prime. If it's in terms of f at x, it would be f prime x, and the second derivative would be f double prime x. And if it's in Leibniz notation, you would say dy dx would go to, this is your first derivative, d2y dx squared, or if it's in, if you're talking about d derivative with respect to x instead of dy dx, d dx is another format, it would be d squared dx squared. So it doesn't mean you're squaring anything, it just means you're taking the second derivative. So the first question we're going to look at is dealing with just simply taking a second derivative. So let's take a look at this function, f at x equals x over 1 plus x. It's obviously a quotient, so I'm going to apply the quotient rule. And so let's get right to that. So f prime x is going to be, and remember your ho de high rule, so it's ho d high minus hi d ho. You don't have to write the ones out, I'm just putting it there for those of you who wonder what the derivative was, over ho all squared. So this is going to give me 1 plus x minus x, or just 1 over 1 plus x quantity squared. So there's my first derivative. It's asked me to find f double prime, so that second derivative. So all I do, make sure you're using the right function. I've seen students do that before where they didn't use the right one. So I want the second derivative, which is going to be the derivative of this. So that's going to be, now for this one, it might be easier for you to write it like this first. So I could have um, 1 times 1 plus x to the minus 2. So I bring this to the numerator, or just 1 plus x to the minus 2. If you take the derivative, that's going to give you minus 2, 1 plus x to the minus 3, and the derivative of x would just be 1. So that gives you minus 2 over 1 plus x to the minus 3. So, sorry, not minus 3, I moved it in the denominator, so that would be plus 3. And then all you have to do is plug in f double prime at 1. And let's evaluate that. So that's minus 2 over 1 plus 1 is 2 cubed is 8. And that would be minus 1 over 4. So that's all you have to do to find a second derivative. Now the next thing I want to talk about is um, acceleration, velocity, and uh, position functions. And I don't find the textbook does a great job of this, so I think um, you will find my explanation is really helpful for understanding what's going on. Okay, so what I want to talk about is uh, throwing a ball into the air. So if we start at time zero and I throw a ball into the air like this, oh, I'm going to make a really nice arch, except it's going to go over the edge. There we go. Might have to extend the rest of these now. So here's my ball. I tossed it in the air. It reached a maximum height. This is grade 10 math, right? First time you use quadratics. And so if I throw a ball into the air, let's call this a position function. So this is just showing where the ball is. 
so its height over time, I could put a T here, or the position over time, sorry, which is basically the height as well. And so as the ball goes up, think about it, the ball goes up and then it gets to a peak here. And when you're at this very top spot right here, the ball is going to stop, right? The ball stops before it starts to fall. There is a rule that says an object cannot change direction without stopping. You can't run forward and then instantaneously be going backwards, right? You have to, you have to go through it. You have to stop before you can change direction. Same thing with a ball. If you're a squash player, you'll know that the ball hits the ground, it comes up, it'll stop, and that's probably the best time for you to hit it. Okay, as the ball leaves your hand, it's leaving with the highest um, the highest velocity, right? You're throwing as hard as you can, but as it goes up, the ball actually slows down. So I'm going to write that over here, that the ball is slowing down. And that's important for you to understand um, speeding up and slowing down. So the ball is slowing down, it stops, and then on this side, once it starts to fall down again, it's going to speed up. So it's speeding up here. So this is my position function. There's my ball. I told you the story. It's going to slow down till it gets to the maximum vertex and then it's going to start speeding up as it goes back to the ground. Now, if I was to draw the derivative of this function, remember how we drew derivatives? We said, okay, we find the zero slope and we're going to mark that down here. And this is going to be my velocity function. And so um, on this side, if Remember we did the little um, lesson where we sketched derivative functions and we had, this was the highest, so this might be a slope of 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and then it's going to go minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. So in other words, it's going like this, right? It's, it's coming from the most speed to the lowest. So this is the fastest it's being thrown is right here. So it has, if, if an object has positive velocity, it's moving in a positive direction. Now, by convention, that means up or right. So this is going up, so it's positive. Negative velocity, the object is moving in a negative direction, down or to the left. We're going to do a function next that is linear, so it's going to be going left and right like this. Zero velocity, the object is stationary and it may change direction. You could stop and then start again, but in this case it went up to, a, to the top here and then it started to fall back down. Speed is the magnitude of the velocity. In other words, you don't have a negative speed. If you get a negative value, it's the absolute value of the velocity function. And of course, speed is the derivative of the position function. So we could write that this is also s prime t. Okay, so on this side, we have positive velocity, and here we have negative velocity. Velocity. Okay. So now, the next thing we want to do is figure out what the acceleration is. Acceleration time t, that's going to be the derivative of the velocity function, which is the second derivative of the position function. And we'll do an example that covers that as well. Now, if you were to draw this function, the derivative of this function, you would say, oh yeah, this is a line with negative slope. It's constant everywhere. So let's say the slope is, I don't know, minus, minus two. So I would draw my acceleration Here's my acceleration line right here. So here's my x. So it has negative acceleration. Acceleration at time t is less than zero, or the velocity is less than zero, or the second derivative is less than zero. So positive acceleration, negative acceleration, and negative zero acceleration means the velocity is constant and the object is neither accelerating or decelerating. Accelerating means speeding up. Um, accelerating, sorry, accelerating is the um, 
Speeding up means acceleration times velocity is greater than zero. Now watch, I'll show you how that works. So in this case, this ball example, there is negative acceleration because there is acceleration due to gravity. You know that from physics, right? Acceleration due to gravity, that just means negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And if you recall back in grade 10, a lot of your initial position functions were minus 4.9 t squared. Now what happens when you take the derivative of that? You would get minus 9.8 t, and a second derivative would give you minus 9.8. And this would be your acceleration, your velocity, and your position function. And that all starts to make sense now because this is acceleration due to gravity. And if you think back to grade 10, I'm sure you remember there were a lot of minus 4.9 t squared. Maybe your teacher explained why. Maybe they didn't. But now you know. So this is the ball example. And these are the explanations of how things are going to work. Okay. So let's do an example. Um, here we have the motion of an object along a straight path is given by this equation here. So it's a position function. Oops, let's get it down here so you can see. The position function, s of t, and it's a cubic function, where s is displacement in meters and t is greater than or equal to zero. Determine the velocity and acceleration after one second. Okay, so again, this is calculus you take the derivative, right? Volume, the vol volume. Velocity at time t, so it's a really easy thing to take the derivative of. 3t squared minus 24t plus 36. So if you looked at this object, the object started at 5, because when I put in time 0, I would be at 5. Okay, so that's going to be important later on. So here is the velocity. I want what is the velocity after one second, and I plug in one, and I would have 3 minus 24 plus 36. Uh, 30 minus 34 and 26, that's 12, and 3 is 15, so it's 15 meters per second. That's the velocity after one second. Now the acceleration, acceleration at times t, is the second derivative. So I want the derivative of the velocity. Don't do it of this one, okay? Be careful which one you're working with. So it gives me 6t minus 24. And the acceleration at one second is going to be 6 minus 24 is negative 18. So the question says, is the object speeding up or slowing down at one second? So don't look at the acceleration. So this is minus 18 meters per second squared. Now remember that, um, and this one I, I caught so many students on the unit test, speeding up, slowing down. So if the velocity times the acceleration here, this is what we want to look at, and we want to know is it greater than zero or less than zero. So the velocity here was 15. This is at, at um, I should actually write it like this, v at 1 times a at 1 equals 15 times negative 18. I don't need to know the number. All I need to know is that is less than 0, happy face, therefore speeding up, no, slowing down. So it's slowing down. So if the velocity times acceleration is less than 0, the object is slowing down. Don't forget this little rule, okay? That was on, on the last page here, this part here, right at the top. See, it says speeding up, slowing down, slowing down, speeding up. Memorize that, or it will make sense to you if you know the diagram, right? If you follow that ball example. When is the object at rest? Okay, so the object is at rest when the velocity is zero. So I'm going to say when v at t equals zero, that means it's going to be at rest. So I want the velocity function set to zero. So 3t squared minus 24t plus 36 is equal to zero. Everything divides by three nicely, right? So let's, let's divide out the three plus 12 equals zero. What multiplies to 12 and adds to negative eight? 
How about minus 6 and minus 2? t minus 6, t minus 2 equals 0. So the object is going to be at rest at 2 seconds and 6 seconds. So you would say at rest when t is equal to 2 and 6. The next question says, what is the displacement at these times? The displacement, that's S at T, right? It's the position. That's what they want. So now I'm going to do what is S at 2 equal to? So I plug in S at 2. I'm not going to spend time doing a little bitty calculations for you. It's 37 and S at 6 is equal to 5. Okay, so we're we're moving along. The next question wants to know when is the object moving in a positive direction? Okay, so I'm going to take this information that I have here where I know it's at rest and I know where it started and I'm going to put it on, it's kind of like a number line graph. So at five seconds, the, um, uh, no, not five seconds, at S zero, we were at five. Okay, S0. When I plug in 0 in the original function here, I get a position of 5, right? 0, 0, 5. Okay, so S at 0 equals 5. And I have S at 2 is 37. So let's just make this 37 out here. So the function goes from 5 to 27. And then at S at 6, it's back at 5. So I'm just going to put that one up here. So S at 6. So this function has to turn around and go back to here. Or maybe I'll just move that dot down so it looks neater. Okay, so we're back to here. And then I need to know um, what happens after this point. So I would probably plug in one more value, like maybe try S at 7. And you're going to find out that the, the function starts going back this way again. So when is the function moving in a positive direction? So positive direction is here and here, right? These are the positive directions. Now, if I were to graph the, um, the velocity function, so if I were to graph this velocity function, 